Hi, today I'll be making a fractal in GLSL, and I hope you will be too. First, navigate to shadatory.com slash new and you'll see the screen. On the right is your code, and on the left is what it produces after being run for every pixel on the screen. Right now we have a function which returns nothing called main image, which gives you an output four component vector named frag color and takes as input a two component vector named frag chord. Let's leave their example code and create a red screen by setting frag color equal to a four component vector containing the numbers one, zero, zero, and one. Make sure to include the decimal points or it won't work. Frag color represents the color at a given pixel on the screen. The first number is how red the pixel is, the second green, the third blue, and the fourth is its opacity or alpha. This represents the representation of colors is often called RGBA. Colors are formed by mixing these colors together. They all range from 0 to 1, so if only the R and A channels are 1, then the output is an opaque red. Got it? Now let's do something cooler. So we have this variable called frag chord, which represents a pixel's coordinate. This is 0, 0. This is 800, 450 on my screen, at least. We also have the variable i resolution, which is the size of the screen in pixels. Create a variable normalized chord. Set it equal to the frag chord divided by i resolution.xy. Normalized chord is now our pixel coordinates, except ranging from 0 to 1 on both axes. Now let's replace the red and green channels with normalized chord. GLSL is smart enough to realize that this vector takes up two slots of the vect4, so we can also rewrite it more concisely like this. Either way, we get this as the result. Since we're setting the color to the normalized coordinates, red corresponds to the x coordinate and green corresponds to the y coordinate. Both systems range from 0 to one, so they match up perfectly. So for instance, we go from no red at the very left to maximum red at the very right. Okay, let's make something cooler. First of all, let's multiply normalized chord by 2.0, changing the interval in both axes from 0, 1 to 0, 2. Then we subtract 1 to get the interval negative 1 to 1. As you may have realized by now, whenever you add or subtract a number from a vector, it applies the operation to each vector component separately. Now let's change our output color to instead take the magnitude or length of normalized chord for all three channels. We now get this interesting looking radial gradient. This makes sense because our color is equal to the distance of these chords arranged from negative 1 to 1 from the origin. The origin is the center, so things close to the center are dark and things far from the center are bright. We can simplify this expression a bit by wrapping the length function into vec3. If you create a vector with a single argument, it sets every component to that argument. And of course GLS is again smart enough to let us shove the vec3 into the first three slots, the RGB slots of the vec4. Alright, here's where things get fun. Set the normalized chords to the absolute value of themselves. Okay, that didn't do anything. Now subtract 0 0.5 from them. Okay, this is more interesting. We have four of them now. Then multiply them by 1.1. Alright, cool. Now I want you to rotate them a bit, and we can do this by multiplying them by 2 by 2 rotation matrix. The first part of this matrix is the cosine of the angle to rotate by, then the negative sign, then the sine, and then the cosine. Now let's repeat this entire process like 10 times. No, don't copy and paste it. Let's create a for loop using the for block. To find a floating point variable i to start at 0.0, .0 keep looping until it reaches 32.0 and increase i by 1 at the end of each loop. Then for each loop iteration, do we do all the stuff we said earlier? And this is what we've created. Fractal. But it's kind of boring. There isn't much going on. Let's fix this. We'll create a variable called angle, set it equal to our angle, and replace all the 0.2s with a variable angle. Here's where it gets cool. Instead, set this angle variable to the variable i time and watch your fractal animate. That's a bit fast, though. I'd rather actually be able to see it. There we go, much better. We can get some more fractals by messing around with the parameters some more. Let's replace this vec3 nonsense with what we had before, except let's add a few random vectors onto each component to vary them a bit. And now our fractals are colorful. Awesome. Let's try some more things. Scaling by a factor of 1.2 creates this. 1.5 just creates random noise. Let's try changing it to 1.03. 1.03 .03 makes it all blurry. That is until we add some more iterations. Adding more iterations also makes it potentially seizure inducing, so I'm going to slow it down the speed a ton. But anyway, that's one out of the many millions of cool things you can do with OpenGL Shading Language, aka GLSL. Have fun, and I hope you enjoyed.